Born in Kentucky, made in America, and inspired by the world. That's Wild Turkey. And as creative director of Wild Turkey and co-creator of Long Branch, I am here to tell their story. And it's led me on a search for other folks who don't mind taking the hard road in order to do something great. I am here to shine a light on some trailblazers, innovators, groundbreakers, people that make stuff happen for good. I want to know where they're from, where they're going, what they do, how they do it, but most importantly, I want to know why. They have an unwavering conviction to do what they do. So maybe I can get inspired, and maybe you can too. The way forward for humanity is to build better people. So let's take a seat, take a sip, let's talk turkey. The sweet spot between dying and living, that's where Maya Gabera lives. First woman to pursue a career in big wave surfing. You petitioned successfully the World Surfing League to create the category, and you are currently the world record holder for largest big wave surf by a woman. Maya Gabera, that's you. Yes, thank you, love the introduction. <laughs> Why big waves? Why not uh, just surfing? I wasn't accustomed to waves that size. I don't have that in Rio. I grew up in a beach that doesn't get bigger than six foot, so okay. eight foot. And then I'm in Hawaii and I'm seeing those giant waves. It was the year that the Eddie Aikau happened, which is a very legendary contest that happens when Waimea Bay is really big. And, and I remember that they kind of really changed my life. Like I saw all those guys competing and, and no woman and and those like 20,000 people going to see that spectacle and it was so beautiful and I thought, I just thought, wow, you know, there has to be a woman <laughs> that should do that too because it looks amazing. Yeah, but did you, let me ask you this, because did you immediately, when you saw that, 20,000 people, the men are surfing these big waves, you are now introduced to these big waves that you didn't have in Brazil, you're in Hawaii, you're looking at that, how much are you saying, I want to do that because I want to surf big waves. And, oh yes, I'm a woman. Or how much did you look at it and go, I'm a woman and I want to do that. I mean, what came first? I, Maya, want to do that I, because- I, Maya, want to do that. And then I thought, you know, it's, and, and it's always been like that in my career, truly. But I never saw myself as a feminist when I was uh, creating my path, you know? I just, I literally just, just didn't see limitations. I didn't want to have to compare myself to a man because that would be just, wouldn't even be fair. I mean, right. it's not necessary, you know? I wanted to just really be able to pursue whatever was the best in me. I, um, I want to talk to you about so I want to get I want to get a little more personal about what is it that drives you, and I think from what studying I've done on how you got here, there's a period that I'm very interested in to talk to you about. 2013, you go to Nazareth, and I watched the video, and I broke a sweat watching. Fastest wave you've ever been on, uh -huh. biggest. Mm -hmm. You break your ankle. Mm -hmm. You go down. Your teammate, it was Carlos, time comes by. I think he missed you one time or you missed me. Missed three. me 10 minutes. 10 minutes. The second wave that I took on the hat was the, my big problem to deal with because it was very, very big. And it took me down. I, I stayed on for a long time. And when I'm almost surfacing, uh, a third wave catches me right when I'm about to, to break that last white water. And, and that one blacked me out on the water and took my life jacket off. Took your life jacket off? Yes. And I had a, a very, very, it was a very strong impact. I can't, I can't even explain because it's, it's something that involved a lot of like sadness. And I thought about my family and I thought about, you know, that I, I didn't think I was gonna make it then because I was on the water forever and I had no life jacket. You got sad. I got very sad. Wouldn't you? Closer to death. Yeah. And you've ever been out of oxygen. Funny enough, you know, I'm here in this situation, but everything I've done in my life brought me to here. Like, I cannot blame anyone but me. You know, look, like, 
I've changed my life. Did you blame life. yourself at this moment at all? No, I accepted it. And I think that's the turning point for me. That's when I started becoming very proactive and smart about everything that was happening. And in that moment, particularly, I looked back and I saw Carlos and we made eye contact. I heard him scream, I'll never forget, grab the rope. And I, my body did it, I don't know how, but I grabbed the rope and I hold on to it a little bit and just enough that the wave pushes me over towards the sand instead of the current to the cliff. And that's um, uh, when I pop back up, that's when Carlos dives off the ski and swims me in. Wow. So, near-death experiences, I know when I've had my own, not to the extent that you did, um, I'm reminded, we're reminded of our own mortality, mortality and how little mortal things actually matter. Yeah, exactly. Um, my experience was things that I, afterwards, things that I revered that were mortal, things I looked up to, all of a sudden came back and I looked them in the eye. Things that I was looking down upon, maybe condescending or patronizing or not giving credit, raised up and I looked them in the eye and the world got simpler in a very sober and vital way. I never thought I was gonna wake up again, right? I mean, it went black, I didn't see God. My experience was just black and, yeah. and that was it. And when I opened my eyes and Instantly, I knew, you know, I, I just saw, I was like, I remember like this and the beach was empty and it was um, very cloudy day and nobody was in front of me because I think they were administrating me from behind. And I just thought, oh my God, I'm gonna have coffee and sushi again. Like yeah. I could not believe <laughs> how lucky I got right. to come back and be in the world that has coffee and sushi, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, it yeah, became yeah. that simple. Yeah. And I just remember being like in ecstasy, like I couldn't believe. Five years, goodbye. You said you weren't chasing anything. You weren't chasing another record, but you did say you're going back to Nazareth. You're studying. Yeah, I was you're very studying. Dedicated. You're going to. You know you're going to get back on this. I didn't on know that wave. I didn't know. No, I knew I was going to surf the wave, and I was surfing between, you know, spine surgeries because I had a very complicated injury. I really didn't know if it was possible physically to regain my, my performance level and to be a full-time athlete again, because most of what I did for four years was physiotherapy. But you go back yeah. to Nazareth where you get the world record at 68 yeah. feet. When you're off it, when you hit it, and that what's the adrenaline? What is the... It's intense. <sighs> it's intense. It's like a, it, 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 it's a huge satisfaction. It's a huge moment of very intense sensation, high speed, very little thought. You're very much living in, in the moment, yeah. very present, very focused. And it takes so much for that ride to happen, that when it happens, you give so much value to it because it's not easy, you know. For you to get that one ride, it takes so much. There is no way, like those are rides that you'll never forget. And I think that's priceless. Ever any thought during this four or five years of rehabilitation? You know what, maybe I need to do something different. Oh, so many times. <laughs> I so many times looked inside myself and asked, you know, what other job I could take and what else could I do for a living and what else would make me happy? What else could I be good at? And it was like, I didn't know anything else but wake up and grind. You said <laughs> it earlier, like, I love the ocean. I love the ocean, yeah. Do you love that spot? In your time where you almost left this life, you said it, nearest death, never felt so alive. Is that the honey hole? Is that the spot? This is where I live. This is where I, I want to keep chasing that place. I don't chase the place of almost okay. death. No way. 
but well, you already, but but by just choice, <laughs> choice of occupation, you choice are, you were already in the playground. The, yeah, the, 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 I don't the, play the, it safe. Yes, right, and and my goals and the things that draw me in life are not safe things. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to be out of my comfort zone. I like to be challenged. Unfortunately, it does come through suffering. You know, it's hard yeah. to to grow as a human if. If you're not exposed to to suffer, and if you don't accept it, if you don't extract everything mm -hmm. that there is, you know, from it. Yeah. So you're not looking for trouble. You're not looking no. for suffering. <laughs> suffrage. No. You're not looking for pain. No. But when it comes, you have it spiritually, have it, and mentally, and have an ability to go. I can get something valuable out of this. Mm -hmm. Like 2013, you'll probably still have little truth bombs pop down on uh -huh. you 25, 30, 40 years from now, from that totally. experience, I suppose. Totally, I yeah. believe so. I think a lot of the answers, you know, for, for not just our world, but ourselves are inside. And um, I like to look inside. Mm -hmm. So I, I've been lucky enough that I went onto a path that was very lonely. You lonely. like to be alone. I love to be alone. Congratulations. <laughs> a lot of people don't like to be alone. I like to be alone most of the time. I sometimes I've have to check myself for that though. Like sometimes I go like seven days in Nazareth and I'm like, oh my, you know, the only thing you've had said is like, thank you, or like five breads. And like, no, you got engaged in a, in a longer <laughs> conversation or else you're gonna go crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do, I do like spending time alone. It, it obligated me to do what I actually like to do, which is dig inside and, and get to know myself and work and, and improve and struggle but overcome and keep on that pace of, um, of hopefully becoming a better human being, I, I think. To be in lonely, stuck with yourself. Maybe we all do a little bit more of that. <laughs> right?